Bryan, and I call the member for Bowman. Thank you, Deputy Chair. There is something to be said for speaking from the heart, but also speaking without notes. But if in your final speech to the parliament you omit to thank your own daughters and mum, there is something to be said for grabbing some notes and doing it properly. So for the first time since 2011, I confess there's a very, very important prompt sheet, which I assure you has been put together by myself, but there has been some oversight. And I wanted to recognise, as I didn't, because I completely lost my way talking about my wife's uh, incredible journey to this country, uh, my <clears throat> 13 and 19 year old daughter, uh, nine year old daughters. So, you know, Sophie's this remarkably empathic young leader that I wanted to refer to in my final speech. And she works so hard just to be uh, good at everything she does. And already at her age, she's starting to make these tough choices about what she can and can't do to try and not you know, raise you know, ridiculous expectations as we often do on teenagers. And Isabel, who's delighting us at the age of nine with determination, resolve and insistence on process and fairness, particularly when Dad doesn't show it. And she just drove past uh, the ASIO building this week and said, Dad, is that the spy building? I want a job there. Can you get me a tour? Um, that's a challenge to the minister. Um, look, we all have parents who brought us to where we are, but the particular story of my mum and dad is that they uh, fell in love and went to the far corners of the, of the earth as we knew it in the 1960s, which was Hobart, no offence to Tassie, <laughs> and then to a tropical island of Bougainville and then to the Papua New Guinea highlands, one of the most remarkable places on the planet. And, you know, dad took me under the shadows of Mount Gilloway and taught me survival skills, which uh, sometimes came in handy in this building. Uh, I learned how to hunt uh, birds using bows and arrows with arrowheads made of possum glenoid processes to uh, hunt a bird without damaging its plumage, uh, something that I haven't done here in Australia with our indigenous species, you'll be uh, relieved to know. Uh, and um, obviously, you know, my dad, a career from being just a local councillor and giving it a go and uh, uh, winning when he didn't expect to, to joining the Joe for PM campaign, to being on the National Party Senate ticket uh, with uh, John Stone and, of course, then in, as a Liberal, mostly in opposition, state MP for a decade. And it was there that you know, I loved door knocking for him and learning a bit more about issues that, as a young medical student, I never would have otherwise. And as you would all know, anyone in this building, those conversations on the table are so important. I remember, as uh, the great uh, poet Robert Frost said, when he talked about two paths you can take in life, um, and both that morning equally lay, in leaves no step had trodden black. Oh, I, I kept the first for another day, yet knowing how way leads on to way, I doubted if I should ever come back. And life is a series of choosing paths, and my dad never got a formal education, uh, but he had an incredible journey that was captured in two beautiful novels in the brief period he had between retirement and uh, falling to the thicket of Alzheimer's and Lewy body dementia. Um, and we have a story that's uh, uh, autobiography, but also probably the only first-hand account of the life of a shearer in Australia because Dad wrote notes and kept a diary. Um, to my lovely sister Susie uh, and Jules, they're sharpshooters, they're fun, and their husbands and partners are incredibly hardworking. Uh, one of them lives in Portsea, uh, which if it isn't heaven, you can certainly see it from there, and Julie and Simon in my ancestral home of the Sunshine Coast where they run a, uh, a strata uh, building as part of the tourism sector. Um, in my electorate, just to conclude, you know, in the transport sector, Phil, John and Caitlin Richards, Jennifer Parsons, uh, Chris and Ginny Anderson, uh, Chris is an absolute visionary, uh, have the only family-owned pub in my electorate, Dawn, Scott and Craig and Greg Hogan, uh, the Bartons, uh, Lynette and Doug, Rob Jones, Jason and Kath Bradley, Jane Goertzer and David Patterson, Albert and Lynn Benfer, Bill Stoddart, Warren and Julian Pride and SSI and Steve and Celine Lamborn, IGA's Tyrone and Leanne Jones, Brian and Esty Sieberts, uh, Damien Smarty and Neil, John McCarthy, uh, all in the law, Bruce Jury and Steve Gibson, Victoria and Aaron Myers, uh, Rebecca and Justin Young, Susie to follow. And of course, my mentors, Don and Wendy Seckham, uh, Don himself, a former cricketer and mayor, Bill and Jeanette Vaughan, Ron, Matt and Mike Loney, Dan and Jacqueline Rigney at IGA Alex Hills, famous for taking on a thief with a flamethrower, Mark Jones, Annie Margaret, Uncle Norm Enoch, Dale Rosker, Kate Adams, Nat Manzoni on Stratty, Darren Cole, Millie Dave, um, and Sam Nielsen, the two fairies, uh, Stephanie Roper, uh, the Leongs and Luke, Dr Luke Catahanis. Of course, uh, Pat and Sue Gay, Ryan and Jess McCann, Todd and Emily Howard, Steve and Emily Baxter, Paminder and Julianne Thind and Rohit Patak and Mary Gibb in hospitality, such a tough path they've had. AITC's Mark Hand, Louise and Shane Peters, Brett and Melissa Webster, educators, Dr Lynn and Bob Bishop, Dave Goodwin, Mick and Ruth Bentham, Jason Goodwin, Mick and Moira Goodwin, Steve Cheryl Laurie, Tanya and Jared Bonney, Wolfgang Nesbaugh, Paul and Sheree Luxton, Mellon, Yana Price-Jones. To me, that means they took good off more than they could too, 
chewed like hell and made it happen. Thank you.